Sometimes our brains get a little foggy. Sometimes we forget what we ate for breakfast. Sometimes we talk on our phone while trying to figure out where our phone is. Sometimes you have to watch an extra minute video three times before you figure out what this crazy guy is talking about. Sometimes, or a lot of times, our brains need a little help. In this episode, we're going to talk about some ways that H2 can maybe help our brains perform its cognitive function. This is our fourth and final video of our H2 on the Brain series. In this series, we talked about H2 for general brain health, for mental health, for brain injuries, and for brain disorders. Go back and check out those videos if you haven't already. These were all made from the help of our patrons from Patreon. If you wanna become a patron to support what we do, the link is in the description. There you will also see the sources for this video, links to products we have tested and recommend, and a lot of other stuff. Now, let's get back to our cognitive function. It would help to know what cognitive function even is. Cognition includes any and all processes by which a person becomes aware of his or her situations, needs, goals, and required actions, and uses this information to implement problem-solving strategies for optimal living. Cognition refers to a broad range of largely invisible activities carried out by the human brain. These things include perceiving, thinking, knowing, reasoning, remembering, analyzing, planning, paying attention, generating, and synthesizing new ideas, creating, judging, being aware, having insight, learning, and more. It is an immensely complex subject, and I don't even pretend to be any we're close to being an expert. What I've done is find multiple points of connection in which it seems hydrogen can influence or benefit our cognitive function. So what we're going to do is look at some different ways in which hydrogen appears to influence cognition or improve aspects of cognition. We'll start by mentioning some specific areas of the brain that affect cognitive function. The hippocampus in our brain plays an important role in cognitive function, especially learning and memory. It is the area where new memories are encoded. It is associated with declarative and episodic memory as well as recognition memory. Hippocampus is a plastic and vulnerable structure that gets damaged by a variety of stimuli. Hydrogen water has been shown to inhibit neurodegeneration in the hippocampus. Hydrogen water promotes the expression of this enzyme in the hippocampus, which subsequently alleviated oxidative stress, reduced cell death, and improve brain function. This study reported that hydrogen water improved neurological function in part by reducing ROS in the hippocampus. Here, it reduced neuronal injury in the hippocampus. In this study, hydrogen water prevented oxidative stress, inflammation, and cell death in the hippocampus, which exerted an antidepressant-like effect. And here, hydrogen had a beneficial effect on the hippocampus by reducing inflammation levels and increasing antioxidant enzymes. The cerebellum is important for motor learning. It processes procedural memory, such as how to play the piano. H2 also reduced neuronal injury in the cerebellum. The prefrontal cortex looks to be involved in remembering semantic tasks. Hydrogen water was shown to prevent oxidative stress, inflammation, and cell death in the prefrontal cortex. Strong evidence suggests a crucial involvement of the amygdala in social processing and social cognition. The amygdala determines what memories to store and where to store them. According to this, a decrease in neurons in the amygdala could result in short-term memory impairments. In this study, the neuronal loss in the amygdala was improved by hydrogen. There was a remarkable neuroprotective effect of H2 in the amygdala as well. Now, there are some specific ways in which hydrogen appears to benefit cognitive function. One of the most common and something you will hear many times in our videos is oxidative stress. Here it says that hydrogen prevented oxidative stress, which may contribute to the improvement of memory dysfunction. Here, it was observed that drinking hydrogen water decreased oxidative stress markers. These results indicate that a low concentration of H2 in drinking water can reduce oxidative stress in the brain. Here, it was shown that drinking H2 water prevents any cognitive impairment by reducing oxidative stress. Hydrogen water reduced oxidative stress in the brain, which resulted in the improvement of neurogenesis. Neurogenesis is the development of new brain neurons. This led to the prevention of the decline in learning and memory. The prevention of neuroinflammation by hydrogen may contribute to the improvement of memory dysfunction. Here, hydrogen prevents neuroinflammation and behavioral dysfunction. Hydrogen was shown to ameliorate sepsis-induced neuroinflammation. 
here it says that molecular hydrogen promotes the extinction of neuroinflammation. According to this, hydrogen can function as an anti-inflammatory by decreasing the expression of pro-inflammatory factors. Hydrogen can decrease neuroinflammation in memory-related areas. Furthermore, the beneficial effects of H2 for the brain were linked to the decreased levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Next, we'll talk about something called microglia. Microglia cells are the main type of immune cells in the brain. They play key roles in brain development and physiology during life and aging. Studies have shown that the absence of microglia results in cognitive and learning deficits in development. Evidence also suggests that microglia play a role in cognition and learning in adulthood. Research suggests that microglia play a role in brain homeostasis and learning and memory processes in adults as well. However, microglia can either be good or bad. It can be overexpressed, leading to neuroinflammation and negatively impact the brain, leading to many neurological disorders. Or it can aid in the regulation of inflammation and help remove microbes, dead cells, and other things that may endanger the central nervous system. In this study, we see that hydrogen water suppressed microglia activation that was adding to oxidative damage. It goes on to say that regulating microglia is a key mechanism for H2's efficacy in the brain. Now, in this study, hydrogen was beneficial due to its promotion of microglia into polarization, which is where microglia have anti-inflammatory function. What is interesting about the study is that hydrogen was able to drive microglia to adapt to an M2 phenol type rather than an M1, which is damaging to the brain. Another issue associated with cognitive function is synaptic loss. With aging, the brain undergoes synaptic loss in many areas, which has a large impact on cognitive decline. Oxidative and inflammatory damage in the aging brain leads to energy failure and synaptic dysfunction. In this study, we see that the beneficial effect of hydrogen was partly from modulation of synaptic loss. The study indicates that hydrogen was able to prevent synaptic loss after the hypoxic ischemic injury. Notably, hydrogen treatment improved neurological function and was associated with a significant increase in synaptic proteins, modulation of synaptic morphology, and number. Synaptic plasticity is the ability of synapses to strengthen or weaken over time in response to increase or decreases in their activity. Synaptic plasticity is intrinsic to the development and function of the brain and is essential for learning and memory. Hydrogen has been shown to play an important role in inducing angiogenesis which is the development of new blood vessels. This is necessary in neurogenesis, synaptogenesis, and neurosynaptic plasticity. Coming back to the study from before, it states that hydrogen prevented cognitive deficits due to the activation of synaptic plasticity. In this article, it states that hydrogen facilitates synaptic plasticity and improves cognition after a mild traumatic brain injury. Next is astrocytes and astrogliosis. Astrocytes are the most numerous cell type within the central nervous systems and performs a variety of tasks. Astrogliosis is a spectrum of molecular, cellular, and functional changes within astrocytes. These changes occur in response to all forms and severities of central nervous system injuries and diseases. Astrocytes are found to be key mediators to cognitive impairment. Increased activation of astrocytes appear to be related to impaired short-term memory. Here we see that the activation of astrocytes was decreased by hydrogen. The results of the study indicate that molecular hydrogen can suppress astrogliosis and related inflammation. It goes on to say that the anti-astrogliosis may be a neuroprotective mechanism of molecular hydrogen. Next, we're going to talk about neurotransmitters. Now, in general, neurotransmitters are essential neurochemicals that maintain synaptic and cognitive function in mammals, including humans. Neurotransmitters have consistently demonstrated an important role in learning and memory. There are a few specific key neurotransmitters that hydrogen seems to influence so we will talk about those specifically. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Its excessive release has been found to induce neurodegeneration and cognitive impairment. In abnormal conditions, glutamate may behave as a neurotoxin. As a neurotoxin, it is believed to be involved in the pathogenesis of a variety of neurodegenerative diseases in which cognition is impaired. In this study, we see that hydrogen reduced glutamate toxicity induced death of neurons. An optimal dose of glutamate is essential for normal brain physiology. However, low and high doses can trigger neurotoxic and cytotoxic cascades. This study says that hydrogen may contribute to the recovery of DNA damage from glutamate toxicity in the brain cells. And it says that hydrogen was able to protect brain cells from oxidative stress and glutamate toxicity. In this study, it was reported that hydrogen water significantly suppressed cell death caused by glutamate. It states that it is highly probable that 
the hydrogen can reach and deliver neuroprotective effects in the brain. Dopamine is another key neurotransmitter in the brain. Numerous studies have shown its regulatory role for motor and limbic function. Disorders of dopamine lead to a decline in neurocognitive function, especially memory, attention, and problem solving. Then we see hydrogen water showed a significant reduction in the loss of dopaminergic neurons. So hydrogen water actually protects against the loss of dopaminergic neurons. In this study, we see the H2 can significantly improve neurodegenerative symptoms with a therapeutic effect comparable to that of dopamine therapy. Acetylcholine is another neurotransmitter that hydrogen appears to influence. Acetylcholine supports and regulates different types of memory, including long-term and working memory. Decreases in the levels of acetylcholine can cause multiple motor side effects, including tremors and problems with coordination. The data suggests that the way hydrogen can affect acetylcholine is by influencing acetylcholine esterase. This is essential for the human body to regulate acetylcholine and control its activities in the brain, muscles, and nerves. Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors are typically prescribed to treat symptoms of functional and cognitive decline. So when it's inhibited, it allows for more acetylcholine to help with cognitive function. But acetylcholine can cause damage if it's overexpressed. Therefore, it needs to be regulated by acetylcholine esterase, which also has to be at a healthy level. In essence, acetylcholine can cause harm if overexpressed or underexpressed. And acetylcholine esterase helps to regulate that, but it also needs not to be over or underexpressed. And all depending on certain pathologies. Woo! I'm definitely going to be tired of saying these two words. Anyway, in this study, the levels of acetylcholine esterase were decreased by a type of pesticide, but hydrogen was able to increase the activities of acetylcholine esterase by 79.9%. The findings of the study indicate a possible direct interaction with the hydrogen molecules and acetylcholine esterase enzyme. It says that this work defines a novel mechanism of the biological activity of hydrogen by directly increasing the acetylcholine esterase activity. The present results indicate that far more biochemical reactions may be affected by hydrogen. Next is a neurotransmitter, serotonin. Studies have revealed that the manipulation in serotonin can produce changes in cognitive function. Serotonin regulates many important physiological processes such as body temperature, pain, appetite, sleep, and motor activity, but it also modulates higher brain function, such as cognitive and emotional behavior. This study states that the treatment with hydrogen water prevented age-related declines in cognitive ability, which was associated with increased brain serotonin levels. The last neurotransmitter we're gonna talk about is histamine. Histamine is expressed by mast cells, which can be located in various tissues, including the central nervous system. Mast cells reside close to blood vessels near neurons. Mast cells' excessive degranulation of histamine can disrupt the blood-brain barrier and increase bleeding after a brain injury. This study states that hydrogen was able to reduce the excessive levels of histamine. So this shows us that hydrogen can influence neurotransmitters in our brain. We talked about ways that hydrogen can influence our cognitive function. Through all that, we can see that hydrogen has the potential to prevent cognitive impairment, to prevent behavioral dysfunction, to prevent a decline in learning, to improve memory dysfunction, and to improve brain function. There is one more benefit that hydrogen appears to have for our cognitive function based on the current research, and that is that hydrogen appears to improve mental alertness. Here it says that both caffeine and hydrogen water affected markers of alertness in young, sleep-deprived men and women. It also says, based on the visual analog scale for measuring mental alertness, that a single dose of caffeine improved mental alertness by 1.6 points, whereas a single dose of hydrogen improved it by 1.7 points. Hydrogen displayed no side effects and therefore may be advanced as a safe and effective alternative for caffeine for sleep deprivation. Now, like I said, all this information is based on the current research that I've been able to get my hands on. I tried my best to simplify it, but these things are very complicated and involve multiple points of interconnection. For example, it may be connected in this way or this way, or it can be connected this way. But the main point of what you should take from this video is that hydrogen has good potential to benefit our cognitive function. And again, that can mean different things for different people. But what's exciting is to see all the connections and possibilities and imagine what hydrogen could be doing in our brains. Woo! There you have it. Four episodes of how hydrogen can help our brains. But I tell you what, this brain is tired. I'm gonna go drink me some hydrogen water or breathe some hydrogen gas. If you're looking for ways to utilize hydrogen in your daily life, 
I test hydrogen products and recommend the ones that are good. You can find that link in the description or go here to find it. Also, huge thanks to our patrons and our advanced patrons for their support. This was a big project and this has not been an easy time for our family, but we got it done and we owe our patrons a huge gratitude for partnering with us. If you want to help us out by partnering with us too, our Patreon link is in the description. If you haven't watched our last video about hydrogen for 10 of the top brain disorders, you can go watch that here and now. And that was your brain boosting dose of H2 within minutes.